Happy Friday, Cedar Park. Up ahead, a look at the future of Texas weather amidst environmental change. A sports report and a basketball hype video. Plus, weekend destinations and a new pet of the week. Let's jump in because the Wolfcast starts now. Good morning, I'm Abby Martinez, joined by Jack Falshick and Katie Whitmarsh. Exactly one year ago today, a historic winter storm left hundreds of citizens freezing and in the dark. And since then, many Texas residents are uneasy about the future and wonder what's in store for the state. With a look at how our Texas weather may change in the future, reporter Ethan Hexter has more on the topic. Thanks, Abby. Environmental change may seem like it's gone on the back burner, but the effects of it are already prominent. We're going to be dealing with an extremely cold Arctic air mass at the same time. A winter storm warning deep in the heart of Texas. Uh, winter weather warnings and advisories. In northern Texas. Austin and San Antonio. Gray cold. 19 degrees. 12 degrees. It's 12 below zero. Icy roads and very, very dangerous conditions. One year ago, the entire state faced abnormally low temperatures and increased amounts of snowfall. Due to the pressure to our power grid and plumbing systems, people throughout the state struggled to maintain food, water, and electricity during the storm. In Texas alone, there were 246 confirmed deaths reported by the Texas Department of State Health Services. Many students faced difficulty in their homes, including senior Meredith Jenkins. During the storm, Meredith was one of many students of the school who lost power. We mostly just stayed home. The roads were too icy where we were, where we were at because we didn't have like the ice plows come through. Um, but we basically just stayed home. Um, I live pretty far away from Cedar Park. I live over like at the edge of Leander. Um, we don't have any like grocery stores super close by, so that was kind of a pain, but I mean, we lived, so. Thousands of people across Texas faced with Meredith and many other students did, but why? Evidence shows that extreme weather like last year's freeze may be in part due to environmental change. As greenhouse gases have slowly been raising ocean temperatures worldwide, our ocean level has been rising. This leads to water vapor in the atmosphere, which can cause more precipitation worldwide in the form of snowfall. Dr. John Holdren, a scientist at Harvard University, explains how over time our world temperature may become less varied overall. In the warming world that we're experiencing, the far north, the Arctic, is warming roughly twice as rapidly as the mid-latitudes, such as the United States. That means that the temperature difference between the Arctic and the mid-latitudes is shrinking. This means that eventually we may continue to experience more and more extreme natural disasters in the form of worse winter storms and hurricanes. But what has been done since last year's storm? Will we be prepared if we have another storm of such magnitude? Since last February, Texas legislature has made one prominent change. Power companies must now follow certain requirements to prepare for weatherization, and they must submit documentation to the government proving that they have made changes to prepare for extreme weather. However, many power companies have either submitted exemption forms, requests for more time, or haven't submitted reports at all. If you're interested in this topic, check NASA.gov and the Environmental Protection Agency for more information on environmental change and its effects. Thanks, Ethan. Now let's throw it over to Maddie Cooper with the top three things you need to know for today. Good morning, Cedar Park, and happy Friday. I'm Maddie Cooper, and here are your top three things you need to know today. First, a suspicious device was detonated in Georgetown. The bomb squad deactivated what citizens called a pipe bomb, located near a residential area. All nearby neighbors were told to stay in the back of their houses away from windows till everything was cleared. Next, a donkey in West Texas is looking for love this Valentine's Day. After the passing of the donkey's friend Sheep, the owner noticed he was very lonely and decided to find him a mate. She includes details of why her donkey is the perfect soulmate and is looking for someone who has a donkey they can no longer take care of. If you know of another lonely donkey, you can contact her at whispering5601 at yahoo.com. Lastly, the wife of the founder of Star Trek's Ashes are blasted out of this world. Her husband, Gene Roddenberry, died in 1991, and his ashes were lodged deep into space. Now, 14 years after Majel Roddenberry's death, she will accompany him. Her flight will take place on a rocket called the Vulcan, a tribute to all Star Trek fans. This flight is a fulfilled promise from one of her acquaintances, Charles M. Chafer, who promised to reunite them in space once again. That's all I have for you today with CPHS News. I'm reporter Maddie Cooper. Back to you guys. Thanks, Maddie. I just think it's funny that donkeys um, 
now that is a widow, but widowed by a donkey named Sheep. That was a funny one. I don't think they think anything. Like they don't. I don't think <laughs> yeah, they're like. No I don't think their brain works like that. They just like see donkey and like. Well, okay. that lady yeah. on Yahoo on the the. She still uses Yahoo.com. That's a little scary, but <laughs> maybe she's just trying to find that companion for her. A little she sketchy. Needs yeah. A donkey. yeah. <laughs> now a sports report with Katie and Reese, but first these announcements. Cedar Parker, welcome back to the Wolfcast Sports Report. I'm Katie Whitmarsh. And I'm Rachel Elizondo. Let's start with our boys' soccer team. This past Tuesday, the T-Wolves tied with Eastview 1-1. One one. Currently, the team stands with a record of four wins to four ties to four losses. You can see them back out tonight on the field against Rouse here at home with the game starting at 7-15. And for the girls who also played Eastview, the Lady Timberwolves took home another win 5-0. The team is currently ranked third in district and has a record of 8-3. You can see more from our girls soccer team tonight as they go up against Rouse at Rouse starting at 7-15. And for basketball on Tuesday, the boys started with a close fight but unfortunately fell to Georgetown 49-38. The team is set to have their last game of the season this next Tuesday at, against Leander. It will be played right here at home starting at 7 o'clock to so make sure to come out and support. And on to the girls, the Lady Timberwolves wrapped up their district play as they defeated Georgetown 50-24. to Now five-time district champs, the team also finished the season with a perfect record of 30-0. to Round one of the playoffs for the Lady T-Wolves will start on Monday as they travel to Buda Johnson High School to play Seguin in the bye district matchup. The game starts at 7 o'clock. If you can come out and make it, make sure to come out and be loud in support. Well, that's all we have for today with CPHS News. I'm Katie Whitmarsh. And I'm Rachel Elizondo. Up next to honor the end of basketball season, here's a basketball hype video. I know that it's hard for you to face it And sometimes I say leave me alone I can't take this in my mind I can't pick up the phone I'm more got me zoned in Gotta be real careful with the money that I'm holding I've been since a kid Always knew that I was golden Probably found my purpose and my worth Cause I'm chosen I feel I lose in my mind but I found it I got a new check on me, I ain't talking about balance. They used to tell me that I ain't never had talent. But now they wanna sip aside my money and count it. I'm going far, I might just go to Mars. You boys playing part, I'm in charge. Fuck whoever talking on me, we gon' ball. Many racks in my jeans, they just start to fall out. I've been living crazy, chasing around star I know that it's hard for you to face it. And sometimes I say, leave me alone, I can't take this. Chosen. Up next, Reagan Hill is in the studio with this week's weekend destinations. Good morning and happy Friday, Cedar Park. I'm Reagan Hill, here to tell you your weekend destinations. And with Valentine's Day right around the corner, I'm going to share with you some cute date ideas you can spend with your partner or your friends. First, love is in the water. Surprise your partner with a cozy two-hour getaway on Ladybird Lake with Rowing Dock's exclusive Valentine's Day paddle package. The Lovebird package includes kayak or canoe reservation for two hours, a floral bouquet, chocolates, and a blanket rental to keep the two of you warm. And I would definitely say you need it the blanket because temperatures are lowering to the mid-40s this Saturday. 
For more information, visit the website at rowingdoc.com. Next, I have a little bit of a sweet tooth, and if you're to like me, you should definitely check out the Driscoll Cafe and Bakery, because this weekend they are offering an assortment of Valentine's Day brunch treats. At 1886 Cafe and Bakery, you can find freshly baked pink cinnamon rolls, red waffles with strawberries cut like rose petals, and other savory delicious bakery items. Open from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m., be sure to check out this tasty bakery. Lastly, Saturday may be a little bit too cold for this, but with Sunday temperatures supposedly reaching the 60s, have a fun romantic stroll on the board walk and maybe get a little lost together. Get a backpack of your favorite snacks and drinks and you can head out to the Greenbelt or McKinney Falls to have a nice picnic with a great view of the Austin skyline by the water. And those are your weekend destinations, Cedar Park. I hope everyone has an amazing weekend and a romantic Valentine's Day. With CPHS News, I'm single. Back to you guys. Right? <laughs> that was really funny. Okay, there's some fun things to do this weekend. I know. I mean, I would like to try it, but like, you know. Yeah. Jack, you have a plan? No. No plan? No plan. I'll oh. go with you. To what? The boardwalk. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that we <laughs> had a boardwalk. That's pretty cool. Though. Yeah, no, downtown Austin. There's and a boardwalk bakery. there. Sounds yeah. really cute. Who knew? Reminds me that one's like all the pink stuff. Yeah. Yes, the place downtown that everybody yeah. goes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I'll get some. And now it's time for everyone's favorite pet of the segment, Pet of the Week. Our pet of the week is junior Brooke Johnson's puppy Oliver. Oliver, nicknamed Ollie, was rescued by Brooke and her family in October of 2021, and since then he's grown quite a reputation. This little guy loves chewing on things and running straight out the front door. When they first got him, Brooke and her family thought that he was a small greyhound, but after a DNA test, they discovered he was actually a mix between a miniature pincher and a chihuahua. If you'd like your pet to be featured on Pet of the Week, direct message us on our Instagram account, CPHS News, or tweet us your videos and a short bio of your pet, also at CPHS News. That's all we have for you today. Catch our Valentine's Day show on Monday to see the effects of NFTs rising, some insights into destination imagination and color guard. Plus, Dr. Love and Assistant Feelings will be joining us at the desk to give us some love advice. Thanks for taking time to join us this morning. With CPHS News, I'm Katie Whitmarsh. I'm Jack Polishuk. And I'm Abby Martinez. Remember to make it a great day or not, the choice is yours. Have an amazing weekend, Cedar Park. <laughs>